In this video we will show how to troubleshoot if you have the symptoms of no image or a blank screen, but you can see an image on the screen with a flashlight and you do have audio. This video applies to the following power supply slash LED board part number 0500-0614-0300 Provisio TV models E420-A0, E420D-A0, E420I-A0. We have longer versions of those model numbers listed on the screen. And panel number LC420DUG-JFR1. In this video, the test that we are showing is checking the voltages. Testing the voltages will help to determine if the backlighting problem is being caused by the power supply slash LED board or the actual LEDs themselves. If you have not run the flashlight slash backlight test, please click the link in the video to the flashlight test. If there is not a link to click, please go to our channel and find the flashlight test video. After running the flashlight test, if you determine that you do have an image on the screen, while using a flashlight, and you have audio, but no backlights, continue this troubleshooting video. In order to continue troubleshooting, you will need to have the skills, experience, and tools necessary to check voltages on the power supply slash LED board. It is necessary that you take the proper precautions to protect yourself, as checking voltages can be dangerous on a TV that is powered on. I have begun by removing the screws and the back cover off my TV. We will be running the test on the power supply slash LED board here on the panel. We have highlighted this board in the video. As we take a closer look at the power supply slash LED board, here is the cable connection that runs from the power supply to the LEDs. I will be checking the voltages at this connection. The test points are separated into two groupings. We have VOUT1 and VOUT2. Most TV panels will have an even number of LED strips in them, which means the voltages should be identical at the test points. This panel has five LED strips in it, and there are three strips on VOUT2 and two strips on VOUT1. This will result in the voltages being different at the two test points. We have about 40 volts per strip, that is in each group. VOUT1 should be around 80 volts and VOUT2 should be around 120 volts. Before I begin testing the points, I will plug in my TV and hit the power button on the side to turn it on. I will start by testing VOUT1 where I show 75 volts, which is good. Next, I will test VOUT2 where I get 112 volts, which also shows as good. This shows that everything is working well with the power supply board sending power to the LEDs and there are no shorts in the LEDs. Before I begin testing the points, I will plug in my TV and hit the power button on the side to turn it on. If the voltages were at zero or lower than our normal numbers, that would show that there could be a problem with the power supply board. I would want to first unplug the TV and then disconnect the LED cable and retest the points. So, unplug the TV, disconnect the LED cable, plug the TV back in and turn it on, and then retest VOUT1 and VOUT2. We get a reading higher than normal in VOUT1 and higher than normal in VOUT2. This shows that the power supply is working. Since we received a higher than normal reading, that means there is a problem with the LEDs, which is causing the voltages to drop, and the LEDs are your problem. If we were to get a lower than normal reading, or zeros, at both test points, then the power supply would be the problem and should be replaced. Before I begin testing the points, I will plug in my TV and hit the power button on the side to turn it on. If the voltages show as much higher than our normal numbers, then you most likely have a problem with the LED strips. Before replacing the LED strips, you will want to disconnect the LED cable and retest. Once again, be sure to unplug the TV, then disconnect the LED cable, 
plug the TV back in, power it on, and then retest the points. We get a reading higher than normal in VOUT1 and higher than normal in VOUT2. This shows that the power supply is working. Since we received a higher than normal reading, that means there is a problem with the LEDs, which is causing the voltages to drop, and the LEDs are your problem. If we were to get a lower than normal reading, or zeros, at both test points, then the power supply would be the problem and should be replaced. If you decide to replace the LEDs in your TV, here are a few recommendations. It is recommended that the replacement be done by a trained professional, as during the replacement process there is a chance you could damage the TV panel. If you damage your TV panel, it is not fixable and your TV will no longer operate as normal. Always replace all of the LED strips in your TV at the same time. If one of them has shorted out, there is a high likelihood of another having the same problem. When searching for replacement LED strips, be sure to find the panel information for your TV and search using that information. Panel info can be located on a sticker on the panel or sometimes on a buffer board in the TV. LED strips are panel specific and not model specific. If you do need to replace the power supply board, be sure to find a replacement that matches your original part number on the board. Be sure to unplug your TV. You will need to start by removing all of the cables connected to the power supply. Then, remove all of the screws holding the board to the TV panel. After removing the screws, you should be able to lift the board from the TV panel. Then, put your replacement board on the panel and secure it using the screws and then reconnect all of the cables. If you have any further questions regarding your repair, simply post a question in the comment section below. We strive to learn and share new TV repair tips every day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and grow with us. Share our videos with your friends to help us spread the savings. And don't forget to hit that like button.